Evening all. Um, we've just seen an absolutely magnificent game which we're not going to tell you the result of. <laughs> it was between Aronian and McShane. Um, so, okay, uh, I'm with my good friend Chris and um, hi Chris. Yeah, hi. Um, so, uh, should we take it from White's point of view or Black's point of view? What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, let's just keep it that way. I, I think we never switched sides here. Right. I never really switched the board, yeah. and it, um, I'm not sure it might tell something about the game's result. Mm. <laughs> yes, there was no indication at all by what I've just said about the game result. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so if we okay, Aronian playing white played um, d4. Yeah, and uh, just just quickly, um, it's um, it's another game from this um, Tower Memorial tournament. We're in round three now. Mm. And um, if you look at the standings, Aronian is on plus one, so he won one game and uh, drew yesterday, so he's uh, in quite good position tournament. But McShane lost the first two games, yeah. And he's uh, already, if you look look on just uh, the just on paper, he's uh, quite an outsider in this tournament. Mm. He's very strong, obviously, but uh, it's not quite quite up there. Um, so um, there might be the idea that Aronian thought, okay, I need to win this game. Yeah. And it uh, it really shows in the in the, in the opening here, not at the at the outset, but quite quickly we see that uh, we've got an uncompromising fight ahead. So um, it starts out um, relatively. Yeah, conventionally with the, with the Slav defense. So knight f3, knight f6, down Slav, yep. And um, I've seen uh, Luke Machine beat uh, like Nakamura the King's Engine at London Classic, actually, because he, he, he plays in London Classic each year, and that's been really amazing to watch. Um, and he also beat Colson um, as well in London Classic, white side of an English opening. So he has beaten some great players from this tournament already in the Classic. Yeah, sure. I mean, right now um, he managed to uh, get his rating to 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 a level which uh, much more reflects his uh, his two true uh, playing strength. I guess he's on two seven a little bit two seven oh three or something. Yeah. Or do we have here two seven oh oh six or whatever? Yeah. So it's it's like top forty or so in the world, which uh, mm. maybe uh, quite quite fits his his true strength. He was. Just um, a couple of years ago, on two six twenty or thirty or something, and I think this didn't really fit with uh, his abilities. Of course, he's uh, he's no professional player. You need to take this into account. He's got a regular day job and yeah. just plays those tournaments um, in his uh, free time, so to say. Is it Goldman Sachs? He's well well paid, isn't he, in his banking? Yeah, yeah I think he's in investment banking. Yeah. So, um, he's not really. Uh, a full-time professional. Okay, so but we got this uh, A6 line. I'm not quite sure if he played this uh, before or often. Even um, I didn't look that up. But mm. of course, it's a very um, common opening nowadays. Um, but Bishop G5 really is a huge surprise here from Aronian. This is uh, quite an um, uncommon move nowadays. When this variation uh, sort of became popular, which is the early 90s, mid 90s, this bishop g5 was one of the first moves that White tried. Which, mm -hmm. of course, it's a move it's, um, which makes um, quite some sense at the outset because it's a usual move against a6, uh, against e6 also. So it um, makes a normal impression to just develop the bishop. Yeah. Um, actually, what McShane now played, he took on c4. Yeah. This is sideline here. Yeah. Sorry. Dc4 is, is is rather unusual. Yeah. The the normal way to play here is knight e4, which is most often played. Mm. And um, this is of course the huge difference uh, to e6 <laughs> that you have this this uh, somewhat weird knight jump here. And uh, this actually forces White to lose the move again with this bishop. Um, or play h4, which is also um, like once in a while, but usually it continues like this, just to to show this briefly. And this is a uh, pure pawn sacrifice for for white. Right. And um, it's actually questionable if this is enough for a pawn. So it's quite 
quite surprising that Aronian went for this. Um, okay, he obviously had, had some idea in mind. It's not bad for White or anything, but it's um, not the kind of uh, line where White recently um, tried to fight for an advantage. So Bishop G5 was quite surprising. Yeah. Um, but uh, McShane actually uh, didn't play um, Knight E4. He took on C4, yeah. which is also um, a known move. Mm. Um, yeah, and now a4, trying to, um, yeah, make make it uh, more difficult for black to play b5. Yeah. Yeah, but now we've got h6. Yes, actually, I've just been recently, um, as I, that pin video by Smollow I looked at recently, and he talked about bishop g5 as sometimes not a useful pin. Here it's not even a pin yet, but he, his argument was sometimes the bishop can be a subject to tempo gain and and put on where where it was on sort of both diagonals is now just on one diagonal if it's if it's kicked to h4 i know this is all theory but the this this h6 and g5 could be really useful to black i know, i know there's tons of theory on this but as a sort of um idea of bishop g5 generally sometimes not being effective uh, for a potential pin here i thought that was quite interesting. yeah that's true I mean, here h6 is just just gains a move because white white doesn't um, want to uh, take on f6 anyway, which would be just anti-positional. Mm. So play, plays bishop h4. Yeah. Yeah, and now a surprising move from from black here, um, b5, and this position is actually a pretty rare position. Um, I looked it up in uh, in my database, and there are only I found I found only four games on this position. And, um, amazing. Isn't that yeah, amazing? Quite. We've got so much theory, and this looks like a, a beautiful idea coming up, an absolutely stunning idea coming up. Unbelievable. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not, not so unbelievable. I mean, one of the games is actually a game of mine. Oh. Yeah, yeah I played this as black um, a couple of years ago. You already. played this idea? Really? Yeah, sure, sure. It, 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 it's it's pretty well known actually. If you know this line, it's nothing special. But um, the thing is, um, I had prepared this as well as black um, against the player, um, where where I knew that he would play bishop g5. So this was my preparation <laughs> to sort of surprise him. Of course, knight e4 is fine and so on, move five. But I thought this was a nice idea. Um, but in this game. My opponent didn't uh, didn't play as Aronian played, and I think what he played is ju was just better actually. I mean, he was only 2,300 rated um, compared to the 2,800 of uh, Levon here. But my opponent just played e4 in this position. All right. But uh, what, what I did, I reacted very very badly. So this was a terrible game that, <laughs> that I played. Oh. I'm not quite sure what's what's correct. I know what I what I played it was 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 terrible, but <laughs> right. I'm not sure what uh, sure what was 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 right. I think I played, if I remember correctly, I played some stuff like this here. Right. And this was just terrible. Ah, yeah. I mean, just look at the development. Yeah. Uh, I I really got I, I really didn't get my pieces into into play at all in this game. So I think this was a bad idea. Yeah. Um, okay, but uh, we don't want to look at my game. It's just just funny that uh, this uh, came up. So some people were about a bit surprised about all this. But well, I had prepared this years ago, so mm. um, I knew that um, what uh, Le Bon was doing now is is very very risky. And uh, okay, we see what uh, what's coming up. Yeah. So um, okay, um, A takes B, and of course there's a pin on the A file. And it looks as though has black actually blundered here because you know why not try and exploit this pin <laughs> and yeah, uh, <laughs> okay yeah. but i love this type of sacrifice i think this is, must be one of my favorite types of sacrifice where you sort you seem really casual and chilled out in doing the sacrifice and then you get a massive initiative soon after so knight takes b5 yeah it's uh, it's very very interesting and and very um yeah, it's very rare to see this kind of stuff. It sometimes happens in uh, in, in similar variations of the Slav, but um, yeah, here it's um, it's it's very um, very risky to play yeah. for white. I mean, it's okay. But the thing is, black can just take here. Yeah. White grabbed the rook and uh, bishop b7, winning a, a tempo here. So positional exchange sack. So basically. 
this bishop's kind of been shut down uh, from this diagonal and also protecting this diagonal. It's now on h4. This, this yeah. bishop's brilliant. Control of e4 is brilliant. Um, this this e6 is going to be really dangerous soon for the bishop b4 check. Yeah, this also shows the merit of this h6 uh, move. Yeah, without this move, it would, would be just nonsense. Yeah. No. If um, if he wouldn't have played h6 and bishop h4, because let's um, let's advance uh, two moves. White retreated the rook. Yeah. He's got no no better square here, and um, yeah, now black won a tempo here yeah. with the g5, and then played e6. Actually, it's it's also possible. Um, it's not uh, sure that this is good, but it also would be possible to play e5 even. Blimey. Which is uh, the the more brutal way to to try. I'm not sure that it's better or anything, but just to point out, it, it, it's possible to do this. Mm. You've, you've got this immediate threat here yes. with bishop, uh, bishop, b4. bishop b4. And so white, um, so sorry, on e5, white would still play something like this here, and then Check. we get, uh, get stuff like this. It's quite similar to the game, only have this e5 move. It's questionable if this is better, really. I think maybe what McShane did was better. Right. But uh, technically possible, uh, this move is for sure. Yeah. Okay, so he just played e6 here, mm. and this is the whole point of uh, of this operation. Um, yeah, the shot of uh, um, bishop on g3 doesn't help in defending this diagonal here. Yeah. And Black's bishop coming to b4 yeah. is just a super annoying motive. Yes, it's just amazing how. You know, if if White tries to like fend off it or backfire, say Queen D two, you just play Knight E four anyway. Say so here, you just take yeah. and check. you play Bishop B four, check winning the rook. Check. <laughs> so nothing really works, is it? I mean, it's against this check, it's uncomfortable to stop this check. Yeah, it's uh, it's really really difficult. So he went E three here. Yeah. I mean, what 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 else could he try? If you say, let's say, move like Queen C two. Just, uh, just briefly, check. Black can also check here, mm. and um, yeah, then you need to play this ugly move, which you didn't, <laughs> didn't want to. I mean, this is not playable for White. This is even worse looking Actually, than the game. There looks to be Bishop F3 and Queen D4, may maybe, maybe. Yeah, this is sort of if if uh, nothing else, you can play this. But you don't want to give up this Bishop that easily because it can also just harass the Queen here, whoops, with Bishop E4. If yeah, you, all kinds useful. of all kinds of stuff are, are good here. Mm. <laughs> it's actually the I think the most most difficult in this kind of position for Black is to choose from so many um, nice looking possibilities. So I think in comparison, what what the Ronian played is certainly better. Mm. So e3, check. should be four check and uh, king e2. Mm. And you know what's what really amazes me about this here is look at the times. I mean, McShane has spent an hour, about an hour already. Yes. So he maybe weakly remembered this idea and then just played this. I'm just speculating here, but um, no, I, it, it's it's not a piece of preparation. So he sort of suddenly knew this idea, I guess, and uh, mm -hmm. came up with this at the board. But Aronian obviously uh, went into this completely. Yeah, willingly. Yeah, it's not an accident or something mm. that uh, he sees playing instantly. And uh, I don't know. I mean, you need to be very, <clears throat> very brave to go into this position, sort of voluntarily, right? I guess he might think, well, he's going to shut down the bishop if he moves the knight and plays f3, and then put the king maybe later on king f2. Maybe that's one idea. Yeah, and maybe. I H4. think the main idea was that he's playing a, a guy who who lost his first uh, two games and who's also uh, always spending, I mean, huge amounts of time. Mm. And uh, maybe he just thought, okay, I'll get him into uh, some huge time trouble and maybe the position is somewhat shaky, but uh, no, no, he, he won't be able to to play this uh, correctly with so little time. I'm not sure. But there really. is a 30-second increment. Yeah, there is, okay, Freak but um, he won't overstep the time or something, mm. but uh, mm. I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, my honest opinion to play this is just crazy. Really, really, the exchange up? You don't like the material yeah, here? Really. <laughs> it's, it's completely, completely bonkers to play this. Really? <laughs> no, it, it's just my opinion. I mean, if he just plays a normal kind of 
pressing game. He okay, he might draw, he might win, but you never have. This is just ugly. <laughs> it, do, it does look like a, you know a club game where White's sort of a very weak player and he doesn't like Castle, <laughs> and it's a bit yeah, yeah. overly clever. In, in a different perception of this game, it could have been a club game. You couldn't it? You, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that right. one. It looks, it looks, if you first look at it, you think, oh my god, what did White do here? <laughs> and then you say, okay, it's an exchange, aber, huh? So Black um, sacrificed something um, to, to get this position. Yeah. But okay, it's, um, I don't know, maybe a matter of, uh, of good nerves or anything. Well, I would never play this, but okay, it's, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just hate it, um, this kind of uh, stuff where you. You're moving around with your king in the opening, and you don't have your pieces playing, and so on. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, it's difficult. Yeah, maybe it's. Uh, it's still. Um, still equal or, or anything, but I think it's quite clear that Black has very, very nice compensation. So. Um, yeah. Okay, but um, let's get on here. I think um, what McShane played was uh, was very nice here. Oh. He went uh, knight c6. Oh, Oops. sorry, sorry, <laughs> knight c6. Yeah, yeah, knight c6, and I think this is a good move. I mean, you also could um, maybe uh, have the idea like knight d7, b6 or anything, but this is just much stronger. Yeah, it's making use of the most aggressive pawn, isn't it? Because he's got an idea now, potentially, of knight a5 to b3. So using yeah. that aggressive hook. And if he gets that knight, then this rook is kind of made more tactically vulnerable. It hasn't got too many squares when it was attacked. Yeah, yeah and this is very nice to get the, the knight to b3, which is... Um, excellently um, placed there. It's a very aggressive square. In fact, if you, if you look at this A file, black controls most of the squares on the A file here. <laughs> um, yeah, white's white's rooks are both a joke. The H1 rook will take ages to get into the game, so and the A1 rook um, soon will only have uh, will have zero squares. So if available. this knight comes here, it's even, it's another square on the A file. Total A file domination, in fact, <laughs> almost. I think it's, it's really a miracle what 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 white was thinking when he got into this. Okay, but. Mm. Whatever. Um, okay, he played knight e1 now, hmm. which 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 looks quite logical because there's a there's knight c2 to so maybe be annoying, yep. mm. and then there's b there's f3 which can improve the king, and then h4. Um, so there's a few implications, and maybe even this bishop coming later. So it looks as though you know, okay, maybe can white untangle or not this position. Yeah. Okay. Um. One thing I did, I did a brief analysis um before we started the video. Mm. I want to show just quickly one one line that I that I looked at. This was ninety five, mm. which also I thought made some sense to maybe get rid of the knight here in a way and then play play this uh, this f three king f two stuff. Yeah. Um. And uh, but black of course doesn't uh, doesn't take. Uh, he plays knight a five anyway. Mm. I'm going to b3, and um, just a quick, a quick line here um, that I looked at. Let's say f3 here. Knight to b3, the rook is hanging, so it doesn't have a good square. Let's go to a2, and then uh, knight to d5. And um, yeah, this is uh, very dangerous for white. Just uh, one sample, sample line here, <coughs> which looks uh, quite logical. This bishop e1 maneuver that you also mentioned yeah. to get rid of the bishop let's say here here and uh, now it's already uh, oh. time to strike yes I think yes, there's a slight weakness of that last move and <laughs> not protecting d4 yeah I think this is more like a weakness of the whole position <laughs> alright so takes here queen Check. takes King e2. Yes. And yeah, okay, black can just take on e5 is a good position, but if you give this uh, to a computer for a couple of seconds, yeah. it will come up even with castling. <laughs> with the idea of playing rook d8 also. <laughs> yes. And going on the d4. Yes. And this actually is is already completely winning for black. Mm. It's not even playable or anything, it's just winning. Let's say this, this here. This was uh, a sample line. And resigns. Queen e three mate coming. I mean, this whole position is just ridiculous. Huh? <laughs> yes, I mean, yes. White, the, these guys are not really just contributing. 
<laughs> it's just like okay, place the pieces absolutely randomly <laughs> where they don't make any sense. <laughs> this is this position. So okay, it's just it just shows um, um, a line of um, attack for black. He's just a rook down here, but it's just made. Yeah. Um, so okay, this was um, briefly looking at uh, at ninety five. Yeah. So um, ninety one. Okay, it's an <laughs> idea. Yeah. And now, as um, as mentioned, oops, we can just. Uh, as this one, black um, goes to b3 with his knight. Mm. Now, why is the exchange up? So I think we'll look at a few options, maybe, um, if there's an option to sack the exchange, but coming up. But bishop e5, okay, he's creating another pin, which might be annoying, um, potentially. Uh, what, so what, in this position, instead of bishop e5, was there anything else, or is, is it just... Is it one of the better moves considering? Yeah, I mean, what 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 should White play? I mean, it's it makes sense in a way. It uh, prepares this H4 idea. So yeah. I mean, it it's not looking completely completely lost or anything for White. So he's trying to to get some play going and also with this F3 um, kind of maneuver, maybe improve his king. Mm. So um, I think this, this should be fine. So Black Castle now. Yeah. I mean, what else? You need to uh, get this knight um, to move. And now h4, mm -hmm. g4. Maybe this idea attracted Aronian to this position. I'm not sure. So um, knight c2 here. Yes. All this all very, very logical. Man, this, this knight didn't have any square. Mm -hmm. He couldn't go to f3 or d3 or whatever. Yeah. So he, he gains his tempo here. Yeah. Legs dropping back. Yeah, and now funny move, king e1. Because actually, actually, there was also a threat of um, bishop f6 and rook a5, so he's protecting that against bishop f6. Yeah, right. Um, it's say like bishop d6 was played, uh, then 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 bishop f6 would win that. Piece. Yeah, or d6. I mean, just just a blunder. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Both, yeah. Both this this night so, yeah. so both moves win a piece. Okay. So he needed to go there. I think this was all really. Um, yeah, quite logical. I mean, what what you call logical in such a position. Mm. But um, yeah, look at the times. Back Shane down to 20 minutes, and Aronian still with more than an hour on the clock. So yeah. it still um, seemed like he f didn't feel too uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay, and now it's difficult. He came up with King e1. Maybe you can uh, also argue for for f3 here. Yeah? But okay, this makes sense in a way because. It threatens bishop f6 and queen g4. So oh yes, yes. I immediately um, yeah threatens something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think he um, he went knight b3 anyway. Mm. Attacking attacking here. So that's interesting. Um, okay, so if white goes ahead with what did he play? He didn't play bishop f6. He played rook a2. If he goes yeah. ahead with Bishop f6, this would be a disaster, I guess. I'm um, not sure. Not sure if this is so bad. I didn't analyze this move, strangely enough. Forgot mm -hmm. about this, I guess. But uh, it makes sense. That's a bishop takes here. Yeah. Takes here. Check. This kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah now, now you need to somehow move your rook. And the thing is, I mean, you maybe would like to go here. Check. But this is unfortunately made next move. Ooh, that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, <I made laughs> that it. is brutal. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is uh, really a sudden, sudden death situation here. <laughs> yes. So uh, I guess okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. So it needs to go here maybe. Yeah. And um, yeah, what what now? I black is uh, is fine here. It's got this move. I mean, this is just. I mean, this rook's ah. useful, isn't it, potentially, to go there? That's great. Yeah, the thing is, I just hate this position. I mean, white is, uh, what is white doing here? This, this, this pieces are all jokes. Th these pieces I mean, have, are refusing to co coordinate with each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and he cannot castle. He's moved his king already a couple of times. Mm. It looks really bad. I think why white is just, it's just terrible here. Mm. I don't see a move even. What, what should white play here? I mean, if if you get to take on d4, you will just uh, completely uh, walk over white. Yeah, because the yeah this center will fall crashing through once this d4 
looks pretty good as well. This yeah, looks I mean, hopeless. I mean, these two looks. It's it's a, it's bad bad news. Okay, so that explains maybe why Bishop F6 is not that tempting. So he plays Rook A2. If we go back to the game, so Rook A2, and uh, now we see H5 just locking up against Bishop F6. Now, yeah. Yeah, it's quite it's it's quite a weird position there yeah, with h5 and g4, sort of thrown in here. But um, okay, what what should white do? The thing is, you really cannot um, play any normal moves anymore. Hmm. So I mean, white has moved his king twice already. So if he wouldn't, you might think, okay, maybe bishop e2 castles stuff like this. But it's not possible anymore. Hmm. And it's it's really difficult to to suggest moves here. Now, in, in most Tyronian games, his pawn structure is quite good, but what we're about to see is is going to another island. At the moment, there's uh, two pawn islands for white, and to sort of generate some counterplay, he's going to splinter his own pawn structure now. He's going to play soon for f3, but he plays bishop e2 first. Um, but, um, okay, so bishop e2, very interesting, offering g2 here, trying to get some counterplay. Yeah, I mean... I'm not quite sure. Maybe I'm seeing uh, all this too uh, too negatively, but I think he, his main idea was not to to play quickly and get him into huge time trouble, so that he might screw up in time trouble this position. I mean, the position itself is just terrible right. for White. So I I don't know. Maybe I'm 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 too pessimistic here, but mm. um. I think if if he would now think 30 minutes, he won't come up with a good move anyway, and it would just um, help McShane to sort of work out how to progress here. Right. I mean, this at least, um, it sets a little trap here. He played um, bishop b6 here. Yeah, if he did play, he doesn't need to be materialistic here. It would just give white play, wouldn't it? Rook g1. And then yeah, f3 maybe later. It, yeah, the thing is, it's not just play. Oh, um, bishop g4 is, is mating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not mate, but it's, 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 it's bad, yeah. Oh, yeah, because we've got h5 coming out, haven't we? Check. We've got... Um, it's it's not that hot, is it? So bishop g6, there's h5. And yeah, this, king... this this even wins instantly for white. If king here? Yeah, just... This, oh. is, too, this is too much. Yeah. It's, this is too much. I, I, and now white's king is also safe. I can just yeah. play king e2 or something. Okay, not king e2 because of knight c1, but... I mean, black has no attack here. This is too much. Yeah. I mean, what what Black could do, he could um, in this position, uh, maybe do some retreat here to not lose immediately. But obviously, this is not what um, Black should aim for. No, he's activated the rook. The rook doesn't need to do anything. Leave the rook yeah. asleep. Both rooks need to be left to sleep. Don't wake yeah. them up. <laughs> Whatever you do. Necessary to to take. Um, <laughs> and and he, he played this uh, very nicely. He played Bishop D6 here, yeah. which is sort of I mean, even in this very messy looking position. Um, yeah, it's still common common logic here to exchange uh, White's only active piece, which is the bishop. Mm. And you see, the position really collapses quickly um, after the bishop is ex is exchanged. Mm. Um, so um, yeah, what what should what should White uh, do now? He played <laughs> f3 here. Oh dear, oh dear! I just couldn't believe this game now. F oh oh f3 looks. Ah, oh, something's gone really badly wrong for White if he has to play F. Just all these, this structure is getting torn to bits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, one one funny line here. What 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 I looked at? I, what I looked at briefly, uh, Rook A7, trying to to activate here, mm. because so I sort of think, okay, um, Black doesn't want to take on G2, yeah, because mm. it just can help. It only can help White yeah. in it, so. Maybe this move is not uh, too desirable, mm. so maybe let's let's go here, yeah. just centralize this. And now a funny line, which isn't necessarily forced, but I just want to want to show it because it's quite quite nice. Let's say here to protect G2 finally, and we get getting some sort of coordination uh, going. Let's say E5, mm. and uh, so um, what should White do now? Um, if, uh, for instance, he takes him, black just recaptures, and this is um, just a terrible position to play. What should uh, what should white do now? You just 
improve your pieces further, let's say knight d4, rook d8, and black just has, has an attack. This 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 piece is just uh, not playing. Yeah, not playing. Yeah, it's, totally. Yeah, and an even funnier line here, which is uh, absolutely cool. So black black playing e5. Let's say white tries this move here, which looks clever at first sight because the knight doesn't have any squares. Mm. Yeah, you you sort of think, okay, I need to exchange on a1, but uh, black black has this nice move. Blimey. And this wins outright. Even. Well, because of D3 coming out. Yeah, totally. It's totally over. D3. And look at look at those pieces. Isn't this nice? <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Um, yeah. And now black black and black and simply improve his position. Yeah. The stuff like this here, you can just play, play just like uh, nothing's uh, nothing special is is always happening. And and this. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's just it's just it's just a funny line that uh, that I ca came up with, and why this completely <laughs> shredded here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, black has just a very very strong attack, and it's uh, mm. it's just uh, basically for for just an exchange. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, rook a7 didn't uh, didn't really. Um, it's an improvement, isn't it? So well, he went f3. I think. It's sort of understandable to try to open up the king side where maybe you get a little bit of something against the king. It, it didn't really materialize, but no. it's um, understandable that he wanted to complicate matters further. Sometimes you simply cannot be resourceful if you've been, uh, if all your pieces are disconnected with each other. It's difficult yeah. to be resourceful. I mean, I mean, you only can find resources yeah where they are. I mean, if it's if it's just. Uh, no? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but I think this is quite neat. If this pawn goes like this, we're going to have a weakened diagonal. I think that's quite a neat aspect of this position <laughs> coming yeah, up. Yeah, this, this comes up uh, <laughs> comes up uh, quickly. He went the uh, knight to d5. I wondered uh, why he didn't take on e5, mm. but I think it's uh, mostly um, yeah, it's a, a sort of um, other move order. It doesn't change so much because why took on g4 now to yeah. Get a bit of something on the king, mm. and now it takes on takes on e5. Yeah, That's and uh, beautiful. Get, yeah, it gets this queen into position. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you always need to think. Okay, black black has sacrificed an exchange here, but what is this rook doing? Yeah, I mean, the knight on on b3 is just so much stronger. Yeah, it controls the rook here. It's got. Uh, D4 under control. Mm. It it's just hidden this white massively. I mean, white's queen has only one square where it could go to, and this is the great square B1. So, isn't that amazing? You can get such a high fide rating and get a position like this still. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, I mean, you must have. I don't know. I I mean, it's not a matter of of, of playing strength or anything. He just had a, a completely wrong idea in the in the preparation or whatever. I'm not mm. sure. Or maybe. I mean, no idea. Maybe it is that he um, somehow prepared this, let's say, to move forward in 15, and then um, somehow had had an idea which simply was not working at mm. the board. I mean, it's possible. It's 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 hard to tell. Mm. It's really hard to tell. I mean, now you look at it and I think, oh my God, it's horrible. It's horrible. Mm. But uh, he certainly had some idea mm. when he when he went for this. Yeah. Yeah, no idea. Okay, but um, let's let's continue here. I think I mean I, obviously when I did this brief uh, pre um, analysis here, um, I used uh, I used uh, the Houdini engine to to check the tactical lines because I didn't have the time to look at this myself for three hours, hmm. and um, it, for a while it already gave this position as clearly better for back. Yeah, even with the the the, the whole exchange down. I mean. It is also quite quite interesting. I mean, this kind of position, if you give this to Houdini, it already tells you that black has an advantage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the 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 engines are so strong now that they really see this kind of compensation. Yeah. And a couple of moves. I mean, this is al already outright winning for mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's really beyond beyond saving. The only um, hope here for white was uh, the clock times. Yeah. I mean, the rope still had lots of. Time left and McShane down to seven minutes. 
I think when I was so, I was following on a site called Chess Bomb, and I think Bishop F3 was given as one of the stronger moves anyway, in the circumstances to play Bishop F3 here, because they have a real time yeah. engine running when you're when you're watching. Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah the advantage is for Black already. Um, it's just it's just ugly. I mean, I forgot to show one one line actually. Oh. Maybe maybe I should I should I should do this briefly because it's. It uh, it makes quite some sense this idea. If White would have taken here, yeah, just yeah. just and then King F2, which was actually I think a line that I thought um, when when I watched the game live, um, because this looks I don't know, a bit like coordination for White. Now huh? this King on F2, yeah, cuts some sensitive squares and maybe you even can get your rook into play at some point. Yeah. Um, here Black can actually just uh, um, play F5. Whoa. Yeah, just, just, um, yeah, just. I mean, no, need to protect this pawn here. Yeah. White can take. You can just take with the pawn and uh, get a huge attack on the F file. And what, what's White uh, supposed to do now? I mean, <laughs> you so, cannot say, really say give, give White a uh, rookie one. Is this queen coming down or say rookie one? Yeah, this here. Yeah, it's pretty miserable. Um, you're gonna get mated. <laughs> the king's gonna get mated with g3 and queen h1. <laughs> oh yeah, man! Miserable is good. I think it's it's outright losing. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, um, if you give one, I mean check, check me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, what what uh, what what's the idea to prevent this? It's it's hard to see. <laughs> yes. I mean, let's say this. Let's say uh, I don't know. What uh, what what move what move uh, should should I try here? Maybe back here and then this kind of stuff. It's always fun to have the king as a target. Really, this is a good thing Check. for the memory of Tao, isn't it? Because because Tao had kings like this, didn't he? The opponent's kings getting slaughtered Check. like this. <laughs> Check me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So it's it's just a it's just a fun attack here. Don't you think this this game's the good good memory of Tao so far? The best memory of Tao this game so far. Yeah, it's a it's a very nice uh, taking this, of course. Yeah, okay. This this didn't uh, this wouldn't have helped really. So, mm. okay. Um, back to this uh, queen b6 position. So, he went um, bishop to f3. Mm. In fact, sorry for islands. Would you count these as two different islands technically? I saw one commentator recently treat them as if you have pawns like this, they're actually two different islands. So two, three, maybe four, five. Six. Um, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't count islands if I get mated. <laughs> I mean, it's more important for me not to get mated. <laughs> I would count. I mean, technically, in the end game, yeah, these are maybe two islands. <laughs> I don't know. I don't count really in the game. I'm just looking at the structure, and uh, I don't know. The weaknesses, yeah. I really, I really, I, re I rarely count really. I just uh, look at the the position as as a whole, how it uh, looks to me. Yeah. So um, yeah, okay, but uh, here it's just um, it's more it's more um, yeah a bloodthirsty affair. He just took on e3 here yeah. and broke through. I mean we we could maybe look at uh, other moves. Could could White? I mean White cannot even protect e3 here. This is uh, just oh what about rook? Say rook? Rook h3. Should we put that yeah. on board? Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. And then rook d8. I actually uh, had a look at this rook oh. d8. And uh, what now? Yeah, I suppose there's a threat of say, well, multiple threats. Yeah. Okay. Let's oh. say let's say here, and then you've got this nice move. Ah, with the idea of queen g1. Yeah, we've got Check. space and waiters here. Oh, bloody! Now, and now this one here. Oh, that knight's very very useful, isn't it? Oh, it's it's it's, it's this is just just great, yeah. White is uh, so miserable, and I mean, you cannot really, you cannot cover f2. I mean, you can do this desperado move, and then next move it's queen f2 checkmate. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so this wouldn't have helped either. So he went for this bishop f3, after which black could just take him, mm. and he's down to five minutes. But okay, five minutes is. It's not a lot of time, but I mean, we play five-minute games all the time, so yeah. 
You, you sometimes even manage to win a one position. But to get to move 40, he'll get the recharge of time at move 40. So it's 15 moves, but it's 30 second increment per move. Uh, also, also right, yeah. I mean, even if he would have just five minutes without any increment, I think he would have uh, managed. Okay, so white needs to take. What else is there? Check. And now the queen comes in. Now he can gain some time on the clock with a few checks without without breaching the threefold repetition rule, without without invoking that. Check. Yeah, I think this was a very professional thing Check. to do. Yeah. To just Check. repeat here. Yeah. And... Uh, then change now, here. Yeah, and now with the bishop f3 to continue um, play for win here. Um, yeah, and white cannot play queen takes because knight takes c1 attacking the rook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. This, this rook is just an unlucky And if the rook moves, then there's check on d3 as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're just... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's terrible. So, yeah. okay, white needs to, needs to take. Check. And then you can uh, check. give a couple of checks again. <laughs> check. Very Brilliant. useful. Yeah. So and now you still have five minutes, something, <laughs> yes. and, but only only six moves to go. Yeah. So this was uh, very nicely done. And some people thought that he might bottle out for a draw, but it would be such a waste and tragedy if he just did a draw by repetition, just because his opponent's Aronian. He, you know, he shows no fear. And that's brilliant. And he, he doesn't want to be the tournament bunny uh, to be beaten up by everyone because once they sense weakness in this kind of tournament, they'll just go for him after, wouldn't they? Yeah, I mean, that was actually what, what, what the Ronin was trying here in this game. Mm. This was the kind of uh, game where you sort of risk a lot um, as white and trying to win against a person who you might think uh, um, isn't in his best of form or is already a bit of, I don't know, in a bad moral because he, he lost two games already or whatever. Yeah, in one game he just seemed to get destroyed actually by um, by someone um, uh, you know, with white. I don't know if you see that treble sort of battery. We might go over that game later um, another time. That was that was um, a bit unfortunate. Yeah, he didn't seem to have dynamism at all. It's a lot it seems to be about dynamism, doesn't it, in these games. Who has the dynamism often seems to, to win the pressure. The dynamic play. Yeah, sure. White didn't have much fun with his extra exchange in this game. <laughs> I mean, yes. black, black had all the play, so... <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's mean, a good okay, game. So, so what, uh, let's let's wrap this up here. He played um, king to, uh, queen to f4. Mm. Yeah, and this is just, um, just a good move. Was Fred think there's a threat if he wants some knight c1? Yeah. It's got knight c1, knight d4 as a threat, oh, also, yeah. and also rook d8 to d2, or rook d8 anywhere on the d4. Yeah. So, um, very, uh, yeah. very nice already. Yeah. So, white chose queen h2, which I wasn't expecting at all, but queen h2, okay. So, he's offering f3 here. Um, I mean... It's it's already a dead loss, yeah. But um, just a sample line. What, what I was briefly looking at was this move also, rook d8 and then rook d1. I thought this um, was was also making some sense for white. Mm -hmm. But um, check. You get this kind of line here. Now you need to step up. Otherwise, you get uh, let's say this here. This check. is already completely. Oh, you win the rook, yeah. Yeah, or, check. or the queen. Alternatively. Check. Check. Oh, yeah. brutal! <laughs> yes. Yeah, but you can also win queens or whatever. It, it wins. Everything wins. It's like we're kicking so, a football um, here in this game in the variations where the football's like the king being check. kicked around, <laughs> dribbled around the ball. Check. Yeah, as I said, like has has all the fun, <laughs> and now you can even just take here. Oh. Even yeah, big it's, exchange it's, down it's, there. It's, yeah. it's nothing. I mean, you have you have two two extra pawns and this terrible king. So. Yeah. I, has, um, it doesn't have half much here. Mm. There's a juicy Check. queen d4 being threatened here, isn't there, for mate? Yeah. Queen d4, <laughs> and you got, then you got the passed Check. pawn over here if you want it. <laughs> it it's over. Black has got uh, just too much here. Yeah. The knight is still so much stronger than the than the rook. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it, it doesn't help. It's already beyond uh, beyond saving. He went queen uh, h2 here. Yeah. And um, yeah, just just grabbed yeah. 
to get access to the e4 square, knocking out that pawn, so we can carry on with checks and then threaten things like queen Check. b1, if, if yeah, you're careful. Exactly. But now the rook can make an entrance as well with rook d8, potentially. But yeah, rook, he played uh, knight to d2. Rook d8 also wins. Mm. So maybe, maybe it's quicker, I don't know. I mean, it's rook d8 also wins. Yeah. Rook d8 to d2. But this is also quite nice. Queen f3 threatened and... Yeah, I, I checked with an engine owner. I think we're approaching a mate in nine by force now. Um, yeah, the end, the ending, the end position here. This uh, check. I think this is this a force year. mate in nine. This position, queen f3. Yeah, this is mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but okay, you you can also win win all kinds of material here. So, so I think uh, he he resigned after queen f3 check, right? Should we should we try and show that that mating force mate in nine from memory? I don't know yeah, king e1 and uh, um, check. check here. Um, not quite sure. I think okay, this one. Yeah, this that one. looks good for rook d8. Yeah, because we've got we're woven a mating net here, haven't we? Yeah, and even allowing the check is part of it, just because it's only a temporary inconvenience. Yeah, and now you've got rook d8, and then uh, yeah, all hell breaks loose. So yeah, huge, huge threat. And now, I mean, this one. Oops, not this one. Rook a6 to f. Rook d6 on rook d8. Oh right, d8. that's an interesting resource. Yeah, considering the circumstances. Yeah, and now, and now you can check. I mean, now you can can win check. the queen already if you want. Yeah. But I mean, check to, to show the, the the mate actually. Check. Check. Oh check. yes. The beautiful Check, yes, yes, this is what I had on the board earlier with my funny stuff. <laughs> so yes, this is... yeah, this is the maid which uh, didn't appear on the board. There's so much entertainment value having a king to kick kick around. We didn't have this in, in much <laughs> in the world championship match <laughs> that we, we went over, did we? These are really fun games. <laughs> yeah, this is fun, but I mean, no, no, none of both participants in the world championship would be um, playing this kind of stuff as white. <laughs> mm. Mm. I mean, this is really um, a bit of a mystery. I'm, I'm very, very interested to hear uh, why, uh, his motivation in uh, in allowing this kind of position. I mean, <laughs> not, not this kind of position. I, I, I mean, the position at, earlier. <laughs> yeah, I'm at a loss. I'm really, I'm really at a loss. I mean, I mean, especially Aronian. He's, he's got just, just a, he's got such a fine find feeling for for his peace activity and all kinds of he's got often very harmonious interesting peace play in his game yeah, and yeah, this I, kind I, of I position that, um that positional sacrifice game classic against um oh, that Netherlands um guy uh, grandmaster um it was a fantastic giri wasn't it yeah, yeah it was rook f3 yeah mm. yeah br brilliant game with the positional exchange sack and here he's on the receiving end of the positional exchange sack so why is it positional exchange sacrifices are so dangerous and often in my early time on YouTube with the five minute a lot of people didn't believe them that I was playing them so routinely but you get a lot of fun from sacrificing the exchange in chess yeah of course I mean it's it's, it's often I mean it's um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of looking for a word here it's um, I mean, the exchange is, is is a very relative value because the the rook, the rooks um, are pieces that are really they need certain properties. kinds of positions to really to really function properly. Yeah. And um, if you look at this game here in move 15, yeah. I mean, black's pieces. Look at black's pieces. You've got knight on. Oops, somehow I cannot really mark here. I'm not sure why. Maybe I need to to go I need to do this this way okay if you look look at black's pieces I mean all black's pieces are sort of on on their best squares and they can also easily improve yeah I mean the knight might jump here this knight can go here this bishop on b7 is already yeah it's best possible diagonal this bishop is controlling squares I mean these pieces control lots of squares yeah and they're very very actively also 
they are also near White's King. I mean, no? Knight E4, Knight to B3, all yeah, near White's yeah. King. So that, that and, and this rook here doesn't control any square. I mean, it cannot go anywhere, yeah. and this rook is doing nothing. So mm. the exchange is it's very it's very difficult to to activate those rooks. I mean, in um, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm 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 getting the right words here in English. So in German, I always say, well, white. It's hard to see how White would get into some sort of realization phase here in the game, where he realize, just realizes his extra material, yeah. like a slow position where you slowly improve and you can do all these little kinds of moves that improve your position and at the end you win the end game. I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine how White should manage this. He would need, I don't know, maybe like seven or eight moves in a row yeah. to tidy up his position so much that he could actually think of winning an end game. I mean, yeah. it's so far away. Yeah. And um, even, I mean, black doesn't have a pawn here, but very often those uh, exchange sacrifices involve that you get some pawn, like the typical one in the Sicilian on C3 or in the French where you sack on F3, you often, often get a pawn, yeah. even a central pawn. And I mean, this is not even from a material point of view such a huge deal. I mean, if you if you do this kind of kindergarten-like counting system, like uh, a bishop is three and a half points, yeah. a knight is three points, or whatever, and a rook is five points, yeah, let's say a bishop and a pawn is, is already quite equal to a rook in this kind of um, system. Yeah. So you can very often um, um, sack those kind of exchanges. And, I mean, these kind of positions are also very interesting to play. So if you get the chance to sacrifice in exchange for, for a pawn or a nice position, mm. then you should by all means go for it. I think I mean, it's just interesting. Also, yeah. uh, what's often, uh, just, just quickly, another material imbalance which is often very interesting also is sacrificing your queen for for a rook, um, a minor piece and a pawn. I, I really had this uh, quite a lot in my games. And it's very often worth doing if these pieces are playing together. Yeah, Yeah, because I think you can look at it in terms of career prospects of pieces. Like, what is the career prospect of this rook? Only if maybe h4 and hg you can imagine the rook having an open road. Um, but these pieces have got career prospects because of the king's safety to blast open uh, the king. So they're going to get even better um, smashing the center as well. Yeah, I mean h4 is the only slight idea, but we, we saw that like can even just play g4 and the rook is looking as stupid as ever. Yeah. Um, and and this is just just a problem. I mean, White would need um, ten or fifteen perfect moves in a row to to get his pieces even playing uh, in in a way. Maybe we should uh, get rid of all the oh, yeah. all the Christmas tree stuff here. Um, um and it, it's it's just um, hard to see how he would he would do that and black just uh, I mean plays, plays actively in the center and opens up the position yeah I, I mean I prepared this position like uh, I'm not quite sure it's 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 a couple of years ago I don't know seven eight years or so and back then I didn't didn't even analyze it yeah as like I mean I just I, I know back then when I when I and I, when I went so I was so far here in this position I just thought okay I mean this position I just play I don't need to analyze it it's black mm. Um, and uh, I was I was absolutely amazed to see this on the board today. Amazing! You know, what what is he doing? So you actually can, can played this, that. and that game you ended up losing because you gave white dynamism. Did you? Did you end up losing or drawing? Or? Yeah, yeah, I lost. I lost very quickly. I lost very quickly. He he played. Uh, he played as I mentioned E4 here in this in this yeah. position. So uh, it's not so it's not so interesting really. But you get you gave White the pressure rather than you having all the pressure, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I certainly I, I completely um, misjudged the position. Um, but I'm, I don't remember exactly even no. if I played this first or whatever. I mean, I was just completely completely destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> very, think this this pawn cool. chain. It's important to have this pawn maintained on c4 often. And that yeah, was brilliant yeah, usage yeah. of it with that knight that yeah. slow knight maneuver. Yeah. You're sure. absolutely right. I think this also this is also something I learned from that game that I lost. That um, it's very, very um, integral to Black's strategy here to maybe maintain this pawn because it also uh, hems in this bishop. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in in the game that that I had, I mean, it was something like this. 
And I mean, what, what Black's extra pawn is, is just nothing, and White could just develop, and yes. now it was terrible. You've given open roads for the Rooks. The Rooks are brilliant career prospects on the on the yeah, E and C abso files. Abso absolutely, And yeah. the Bishop's got career prospects as well on, on the weaknesses. Should, should we do an overview and summary of this game just quickly? Yeah, sure. Okay, so a Slav defence, which is full of surprises still. Um, we thought the Slav maybe was a bit dull from the, the recent World Championship match, but this shows some of the more very super exciting uh, sides of the Slav personality this when you go into this h6 and g5 business um, but here yeah that bishop now this this ex pure exchange sacrifice this casual kind of which which supercharges the fianchetto with bishop b7 and black's pieces are all very nicely centralized um, now and improving so this knight is destined for a very aggressive square soon um, but first, Check. the white king is dislodged, which means the connection between the rooks is in question. The general coordination of white's pieces is going to be hard to factor in king safety. This beautiful knight manoeuvre first was the prelude um, to and G G4 shutting down this rook, making sure no, it's not having an easy career path from the H file. Just keep that that rook inactive. Um, so here, uh, king e1. Uh, setting up, it seemed, a threat of bishop f6 and queen g4, but that was kind of ignored, just with knight b3. And now it was shut down, that possibility, in any case. So this rook's still looking silly. This look, rook's looking silly. Um, so bishop e2, and now this, this really wrecking white's pawn structure to really start to do damage on the dark squares uh, and this diagonal now, after bishop... Uh, e5 is coming up here. This whole diagonal is, is now shattered with e3 as a major target. Very, very difficult to defend. And this queen's pretty fantastic on this diagonal, even if white did try rook h3, but he just gave up that pawn. The queen's invasion here. Check. Setting up all sorts of horrendous Check. tactics now. Check. But this was very nicely Check. played to gain time on the clock, these repetitious checks. Because every time... There's a repetition here, 30 seconds for McShane uh, to, to come back on the clock to try and get to that move 40. So Bishop takes f3 because of this idea of attacking the rook. And then Check. we see now Check. pouncing Check. with um, queen f4, so avoiding uh, repetition check. No, he doesn't need to. He can carry on the exchange down. It's a crushing position. There's all sorts of ideas here. And in the game... He Check. makes use of the knight rather than just rook d8. He plays knight d2. Um, Check. And now this is um, a forced mate in nine, believe it or not. And here it's uh, actually Aronian just resigned here. What a fantastic game. That really is inspirational chess to show that even against you know one of the strongest players in the world, you can do a very powerful positional exchange sacrifice and make the opponent's pieces look really silly for most of the game. I'm really impressed. Yeah, I think uh, it's certainly a game that the white player prefers to forget quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh dear. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's really it's difficult to tell. I I, I really would like to see the the press conference on this game. Mm. To 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 hear what uh, what was uh, white's idea. Yeah. I mean, I just I, I said it before. I think he he might have. Um, and maybe he didn't look at, at this at his preparation at all, or simply misjudged some idea on move 40, 15 or so. I mean, it, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think um, McShane is losing rating points anymore, even though he's got one out of three. I think it's about his rating performance. Yeah, yeah minus one should be, uh, should be quite okay on paper. <laughs> Yeah, the tournament. Uh, I think it's uh, it's very interesting up to now. We've got very interesting uh, fighting games. Also, another great game today was uh, Grishuk uh, against Morosevich. Um, if it weren't for this uh, really great upset here, um, Aronian being uh, beaten with white, I think we could have covered this uh, one easily as well. Mm. And um, yeah, now after three rounds, we've got. Um, a two a tournament leaders, I think Rajabov with uh, two out of two.
Should we consider? I had two, two and a half, and uh, the other, other one is Morozevich with two and a half also, yeah. Yeah, maybe we should consider um, more than one, if we get time, but we won't promise anything at this stage. Yeah, we'll discuss that together after. <laughs> no, but this game of the day, yeah, this this is a really cool game. Okay, um, I hope everyone really enjoyed that, and uh, maybe be more daring to use positional exchange sacrifices in your own games. Um, okay, so thanks, Chris. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, we're going to upload to our channel soon, uh, so King's Cross channel and Chess Explained channel. Comments or questions on, on both our channels on YouTube. Thanks very yeah, much. Yeah, thanks.